Hi dears, welcome. Today I am going to be talking about a subject which is essential for every female out there to know right from the age of puberty to the age of menopause and even beyond menopause. You should know that God has given you very essential body parts which play a role in reproduction. So I am Dr. Neeta, an obstetrician and gynecologist and welcome to yet another episode of Dr. Neeta's Medical Clinic. At the outset, I would like to request each one of you to view the entire video, to like the video, to comment on it and to share it with friends and relatives and do subscribe to it. Now subscription is absolutely free folks and you have to just press on the subscribe button just below the video and then on the bell icon and then all. With this what happens whenever I upload a video, you will get an instant notification and you can watch the video. So without further ado, let's delve into the video. So today I am going to be talking about the female external genital organs. Now basically the female genital organs are divided into two groups of organs, the female external genital organs and the female internal genital organs. And today I will be telling you about the external genital organs. Now these genital organs exist for both pleasure and reproduction. Now during reproduction there is pleasure and so people reproduce. This is what I think. And this how much to reproduce depends entirely with you. Now the external genital organs are also called the vulva or the pudendum. These external genital organs are all visible on external examination and we have six parts of these external genital organs and the first is you'll be seeing it in the text the first is the mons pubis or the mons veneris the second is the labia majora or the larger lips the third is the labia minora or the smaller lips the fourth you have the clitoris the fifth you have vestibule and the sixth you have the perineum which can be divided again into an anatomic perineum and an obstetric perineum now what is mons veneris or mons pubis now look at the diagram to understand this. Mons veneris is also called mons pubis and it is the pad of subcutaneous connective tissue lying in front of the pubis and in the adult female it is covered with hair. So the part directly below the pubic hair is called the mons veneris or the mons pubis. Now what is the function of this mons veneris or mons pubis? This mons veneris or mons pubis is a source of cushioning during sexual intercourse and it has sebaceous glands which secrete pheromones which induce sexual attraction. Furthermore, the pubic hair that is there traps the pathogens that cause vaginitis or urinary tract infection. Next we come to the labia majora also called the larger lips. Now this labia majora are two and they lie one on each side of the vulva. The labia majora is an elevation of skin and subcutaneous tissue and they join posteriorly to form the posterior commissure in front of the anus. The inner surface of labia majora is hairless. The labia majora contains sweat and sebaceous glands and hair follicles. The labia majora correspond to the scrotum in the male. Now what are the functions of the labia majora? The labia majora they enclose and they protect the other external genital organs and it has sweat and sebaceous glands which produce lubricating secretions. Then we go on, go on to the labia minora or the smaller lips. And these labia minora are two smaller folds of skin just inside the labia majora. They are hairless and they are fatless. If you have given birth, they can be seen directly on external examination. But if you have had no children, then you have to separate the labia majora to look at them. They contain sebaceous glands, erectile muscle fibers, vessels and nerves. In the front, they enclose the clitoris and they form the prepuce and the frenulum of the clitoris and posteriorly they form the fourchette which is usually injured during childbirth. They correspond to the ventral aspect of the penis in males. Now what are their functions? They give protection to the clitoris, the urethral opening and the vaginal opening. The clitoris is a small cylindrical erectile body about 2.5 cm situated in the front part of the vulva. It consists of a glands, a body and two crura. It has a rich nerve supply and blood supply and it corresponds to the penis of the male. But the difference is that in the males the urethra runs through the penis 
whereas in females the urethral openings and the clitoris are totally separate the functions of the clitoris like the male pen penis the clitoris is also capable of erection and it plays a very important role in female sexual response now fifth we come to the vestibule now the vestibule is a triangular space in front of which is the clitoris behind is the fourchette and on either side is the labia minus now it has four openings as you can see in the diagram the vaginal opening the urethral opening the bartholin gland duct opening and the vestibular bulb opening on the urethral opening it is situated in the front of the vaginal opening in the midline now through this the urine flows out of the female to the exterior now the urethral opening is under control of a muscle called the urethral sphincter now this urethral sphincter it remains contracted and it keeps the urine in the urinary bladder or the urine bag till you find a place where you can safely void urine at that point of time the urethral sphincter will relax and allow you to pass urine the functions of the urethral opening is it allows the passage of urine from the urinary bladder or the urine bag to the exterior in a female now we come to the second opening that is the vaginal opening and the hymen now the vaginal opening is situated just behind the urethral opening now this vaginal opening is incompletely covered by a membrane like structure which is called the hymen and this hymen usually ruptures during the act of first intercourse but believe you me the hymen can also rupture due to various other activities but this is definitely a discussion for some later time now in those who have not given birth the vaginal opening remains closed by the labia minora and you have to separate the labia minora to see the vaginal opening but in those who have given birth it is visible on external examination during childbirth the hymen is ruptured further and the remnants are called carinculae myriticorms the functions of the vaginal opening now the first function of the vaginal opening is it allows the transportation of blood from the uterus to the outside during a menstrual period the second function is it receives the penis at the time of sexual intercourse the third is it holds the sperms till the sperms are ready to travel into the uterus during the time of intercourse and the fourth is it provides a path for the child to pass at the time of delivery now we come to the bartholin gland opening now the bartholin gland is a pea sized gland about 0.5 cm and yellowish white in color each gland has got a duct which measures around 2 cm in length and this duct opens into the vestibule at the junction of the upper 2/3 and the lower 1/3 in between the hymen and the labia minus Now what is the function of the bartholin gland during sexual excitement it secretes abundant alkaline mucus which helps in lubrication now the fourth opening is opening of the vestibular bulbs now these are incorporated in the bulbo cavernosus muscle they lie one on each side of the vaginal opening these vestibular bulbs are likely to be injured during vaginal birth with brisk bleeding function of this vestibular bulbs are during sexual excitement these vestibular bulbs get engorged with blood and then they exert pressure onto the clitoris now we come to the last part that is the perineum and the perineum can be divided further into an obstetric perineum and an anatomic perineum now we come first we we will talk about the anatomic perineum now the anatomic perineum is the skin between the buttocks and the thighs now above this anatomic perineum is the pelvic floor on the sides there are bones and at the back there is the coccyx or the tailbone now this anatomic perineum can be further divided into a urogenital triangle and an anal triangle the urogenital triangle has the openings of the urethra and the vagina and the anal triangle has the opening of the anus now the obstetric perineum is also called the perineal body or the central point of the perineum now this obstetric perineum is a pyramid shaped tissue between the vagina and the anal canal now what are the functions the perineal body is very essential to maintain the integrity of the pelvis in females this perineal body may rupture during delivery and when we have a vaginal delivery we cut this structures to allow easy delivery of the head and this is called episiotomy this is it for now dears and i'll be talking about internal genital organs in my next video and if there is any topic which you want me to talk about or if there's any query then you can put it down in the comment section 
and a gentle reminder to subscribe. So stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. Goodbye, dears.